Hello everyone, this is Pamela from Design Wishes by Pamela and I'm super excited to bring this project to you because it is going to be submitted for the Graphic 45 Brand Ambassador Program for 2021, so I hope you like it. Uh, first off, I'm going to share with you a few of the preview pictures so you can get an idea of what this project looks like. I'm calling it a rotating recipe center because that's exactly what it is. And what better paper collection to use but the farmhouse collection from Graphic 45. I chose to use the 8x8 paper pad and the cut aparts included in the paper pad, as well as the chipboard elements. I used the Graphic 45 matchbook box and also the ATC tag and pocket mini album. Super cute staples. I used a cupcake stand from Michael's and a 6x6 Lazy Susan turntable. So let's dive into the tutorial. To save a lot of time, I did some of the elements ahead of time, and this is one of them. This is the very base part of the recipe center. It's a seven and a half by seven and three quarters square box that I put together with medium weight chipboard. I used one and a half inch strips of chipboard to make my braces that you see in the box. Now, when you make this project, you could do yours, you can do yours vertically, horizontally, on the diagonal like I did. Doesn't really matter so long as you have some type of brace so that the center does not, the recipe center does not collapse within itself. And that's the reason why I made the braces. So you'll want to do that too. With, and then again, the direction doesn't matter which way your braces are going so long as you fill that void inside this box. The box is approximately one and a half inches tall and again, seven and a half by seven and three quarters uh, all the way around. This is considered the top piece of the box that I'm making. And the vertical piece that you see there is, is about one inch by seven and a half inches. And that forms the, the base front for the recipe center. And you'll see that a little while in a little while. To put the box together, and then you'll see some other components, I used my go-to reinforced craft paper tape. This is like mailing tape. Um, you can find it on Amazon. I find it to work better on projects just, as this, just like this because it is really sturdy. It makes your project really sturdy once the paper um, tape is dry. And you'll see that in just a second. Um, so I am just making sure right here that everything is nice and square with the top of the box and then the box itself. And again, I'm using that graphics medium weight chipboard. It's one of my favorite chipboards. It comes in other colors too. So here's that six by six Lazy Susan turntable. And I already added a chipboard piece, the same size, six by six, on the bottom of the turntable because we'll need something to adhere the turntable to the cupcake stand. And you can see that. I even rounded the corners just so that everything is matching. Throughout this project, I'm going to be using a glue called Well Bond. I love this glue. It works on almost any medium that you have. Dries clear. Now I went ahead and painted the cupcake stand with my go-to paint, Liquitex Mars Black. You don't have to paint the top of your pedestal. I like to do that just to make sure that you don't see the base or the original color of whatever I'm using, in this case, the white ceramic in the project. So once you have that, you want to cut out some felt to put on the bottom of your pedestal. And the reason why I, I did it, I don't want my recipe center to scratch the surfaces that I might be placing it on. And so um, also to hide the manufacturer's label, of course, but it also finishes your project. And I really believe in trying to finish a project so it looks nice and clean, but this will also help uh, keep your surface uh, wherever you're going to put the center, um, keep it from getting scratched.
So again, uh, the great thing about the weld bond is it will dry clear. So if you uh, get a little spillage or a little bit over um, and you forget to wipe it off, not to worry, it's gonna dry clear. So I'm just gonna apply some uh, on the base of the pedestal so that I can apply the felt. And then after I clean it up a little bit and when it dries, I'll just go around it with my scissors, just making sure nothing is hanging over. None of the felt is hanging over. So I have a nice, clean, um, pretty attractive looking pedestal when I'm done. Just making sure there's good contact between the felt and the ceramic pe pedestal. So for the turntable, I do want to paint the bottom of the chipboard so that because I want to make sure I see all black and none of the chipboard. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that uh, Marge Black onto the edges and the bottom and then I'm going to let that dry and then I'll be ready to adhere that to the pedestal. So let's move on to the matchbook part. And again, this is an ATC black matchbook box from Graphic 45. And because I'm using two pieces of staples, the ATC album and the matchbook, they both are not the same measurements. So in order to make an adjustment on the matchbook, I had to create two additional pieces on each side of the matchbook box so that I end up with the same width as the album. So in order for me to do that, I took two pieces of chipboard, two and a half by five and a half. I cut four of them because I need two for each side. And I attached them, and I'm going to attach them, to the sides of the matchbook. And here you see me doing that. I'm using some blue painter's tape just to secure those two pieces while they dry and make sure they stay flush and even. And I will show you once I do that, both pieces will be the same width, which is approximately five inches. And there you go. That's the ATC tag and pocket album. So here is the reinforced craft um, tape and I do want to show you that the album came with a bracket on the spine. I took that bracket off obviously because it would make my album kind of wobbly when I put it on the project but I am going to repurpose that uh, bracket later in the project. So when I use this tape, I want to try to keep at least one of the threads running through the piece that I'm going to use. So there are these fine nylon fibers that run through the tape and you can see them there. I want to keep at least one running vertically when I cut the tape for my project. And you can see how nice and smooth it looks once you adhere it. I'm going to add some to the bottom of that side. So to do that, I fold it in half with the gum section in the middle. And what activates the gum section is water. You don't want to use too much water because if you get the paper too wet, the paper tape too wet, it won't stick anymore. And then it also will wet your chipboard down to where it's going to bend and, and buckle and you don't want that. So 
just a little bit of water goes a long way. You just want to make sure it's nice and sticky and that it covers, um, the water has covered the whole strip of tape you're going to be using. So to apply the tape, you basically just line that folded piece up with the with the edge of uh, where the two sides come together. And then you want to press and smooth out the tape. Now, if for some reason you, you make a mistake and you forget to put enough water, not to worry. You can wet a brush, a paintbrush, and you would a little bit of water and you can just add the water to that missing spot where you forgot to put water just make sure you smooth it out really good and try to remove as much as water as much water as possible so that you don't get it, that buckling i talked about a little earlier so i'm just going to snip off a little bit and then snip that middle piece and then fold over the tape into the inside of the box you don't want a whole lot of bulk inside the box because you want the box drawer to be able to slide in and out without any difficulty. Check and make sure everything is nice and smooth and you've laid everything down. You can also use a bone folder to do that. Here I am applying the other side, the chipboard to the other side, and I'm going to repeat the steps I just showed you. And now the two sides, the two, the box and the album are now the same width. So I'm just showing you it's five inches on the album there, and then it'll be five inches on the box. So I took the black paint and I painted around the edge and the front of the box. Um, that's because you, I want everything to blend together. So you don't have to paint the, in, the middle of that top, just the outside edges. I'm squaring up the top of the box with the box itself or the box base. I'm going to apply some glue to the tops of those supports and the edges of the box top, top of the box, and secure everything with blue tape just to make sure it doesn't shift when it's drying. So I'm gonna show you how I cut chipboard and I use my, my Fiskars paper trimmer to do that. So how I do it is I take an old blade my craft knife and a metal ruler if I need it. I always have one stand, stand by, stand on standby in case I do. And I run the chipboard through my paper trimmer the same way I would run through cardstock. So when I have an old blade in my Fiskars cutter, I just mark it so I know it's old and I use it for this purpose. So this is just a scrap piece of chipboard. I'm going to put it in my paper trimmer and just like you would cut cardstock, I'm going to pick a, a, a length that I need, line it up and take my cutting blade and run it through the chipboard a couple of times. Then I'm going to take my cutting mat and my craft knife and I'm going to carefully score through the cut mark that I made with the Fiskars blade. Obviously, chipboard is thicker than cardstock, so you're not gonna always get a clean cut. So, so simple, you just wanna cut through those pieces that hang over and look how nice straight edge you get with that. 
The next thing we're going to do is cut two pieces of two and a half by two and a half chipboard. And that's going to be for the front sides of our box. And in order to achieve this, I'm going to line up my chipboard piece, my two by two chipboard piece with the one inch mark for this project. I'm using a one inch mark. And then I'm going to slide over the top portion of the chipboard and cut off a piece of chipboard at an angle. And that's how I get the two sides of the box. We're going to set these aside and apply them later. Now let's get back to the pedestal. So to add a little color and dimension to the pedestal, not just keep it black, I'm going to use um, a product from Prima in Art Alchemy and Finamir called Wax Sear Sierra. I absolutely love this product. It comes in a ton of colors and the colors are so rich and so bold. But the great thing about it is it dries permanent, so it does not rub off. And I have used it on just about everything from metal to plastic to paper to chipboard to ceramics to glass. It is a great, even canvas, it is a great product. And again, it comes in a variety of colors. And I'm going to use some today. I think I'm going to use this one first. And a little goes a long way. So I use a soft cloth, you can use a Q-tip, you can use a sponge, you can use a paintbrush, um, you can use the rubber tip or the foam tip brushes. Just remember a little bit goes a long way. So start, look, start small and then work it up to where you want it to be. So I'm just doing that right now on the pedestal. So now it's time to adhere our turntable, Lazy Susie turntable to the pedestal. It's really important that when you do this, that you center the pedestal on the Lazy Susan base so that it's squared. You don't want your base uh, to wobble or be crooked or lopsided. You want it to be centered. And that's what you need to do. We're not going to adhere the base, the top part of the recipe center to the pedestal just yet, because it's easier to design that portion of the project without it being on the turntable. The turntable would just make it move around too much and you won't be able to get your pieces on even and solid and straight. So we're going to design on top of the box first, and then we'll add the box a component to the turntable. So you see my box, my drawer in my box moves really freely. There's nothing hanging up. I did paint the top of the box and the album front and back cover with the Mars back paint just to make sure that the entire project has a uniform black color. Now I'm just going to make sure that the album and the matchbook box fits evenly and squared up on the base top. Here is the uh, element, the strap element that I'm going to use to hold the album together. And I am going to show you in just a second what that material is. Um, I love using this product. It can make a beautiful strap. When you use the wax sera that I just showed you uh, with it and do a patina. So that craft text craft text. You can wash it. You can paint it. You can stain it. You can add paper to it. You can stitch it with a sewing machine or hand stitching. 
And how I achieved that wrinkled look is I wet it down, I balled it up and I tied it up and then I let it dry. And then you'll see a little later, once I add the, the uh, Prima Marketing Wax Sierra Sera, how it gives it a patina to make it look like it's actually leather. So I'm gonna glue that matchbook bottom to the base and the album to the base, and then the album side to the matchbook box. Just making sure I get enough glue on there because you really want it to stick down nicely. Once again, I'm just going to line it up. I'll use that painter's blue tape to secure it while it drives so it doesn't shift. But I want to make sure that I line everything up so that the album fits and it doesn't hang over too much or at all. And that it's nice and flush with all sides of the box base. Just gonna press that down for a few seconds. And then again, use the blue tape to hold everything down. Just double checking. Really wanna take advantage of the glue not being set to make sure that you're nice and flush. Oh, and one thing about the album. So it does have pockets. You wanna make sure the pockets are facing outward, not inward. Um, so the right-hand side of the box as you're looking at it right now is the front of the box. You want those pockets to be facing the left-hand side of the box so that when you insert your embellishment or tag or card that it's coming clear and um, that it can go in and out of the box from the top. The direction I'm pointing. So the right hand side of this box is the front and then the left hand side is where you want those tag pockets to be facing. I'm going to mark the top of the matchbook box on the back of the album. That'll give me a line to um, use for when I glue the back of the album to the matchbook box. Now, I went a little crazy with the glue and glued a section, put glue on a section I don't need to. You only need to put glue on the sections of the album that will actually touch the base of the box and the sides of the matchbook box. Now the good news for me is even though I put glue where I really didn't need to put glue, it's gonna dry clear, it's in the inside of the box and nobody's gonna see it. So no harm, no foul. But remember, you only need to put glue on the back of the album cover where it's actually gonna to touch the matchbook box. And here I'm just lining the matchbook box back to the album cover. I'm going to use some blue painter's tape again 
just to make sure it doesn't shift or move. Just double checking to make sure I did make contact with the matchbook box and the album. And then I can just go ahead and set this aside and let it dry. And if you want, you can stick something Put something heavy on top, not too heavy. You don't want to squish the matchbook box um, cover. But if you want to make absolutely sure that adhesive is sticking to the pieces, you can do that. So it's all dry and I've added my sides. Now to add your sides to the matchbook box and the whole unit actually, you follow the same steps that I showed you for applying the two adjustable the two sides that I put to adjust the the side the width of the matchbook box those extender pieces and you're going to use you either construction strips with cardstock or you're going to use the um, gu reinforced gum um, paper tape I've already attached my strap to the album and here I'm showing you what I'm talking about that you want to make sure those pockets face out so you can add uh, inserts. This will be the front section of the box that I'm showing you here. And it is nice and sturdy at this point. So now we can add the pedestal, the turntable, and the top of the recipe center onto each other. I'm going to go ahead and use the same glue, the weld bond. I'm going to apply it to the corner sections you see here on the turntable, making sure I have enough glue that will make contact to the base of the recipe center top. Very important to make sure you're centered and squared up with the turntable and pedestal and the top of the recipe center. You don't want this to tip over. And so it's very important that you take really good measurements and you double check and make sure you're even all the way around and you're nice and centered. And that is what I am doing in the next segment here. I'm making sure that my pedestal base and my turntable is squared up and centered on top of my recipe center unit. This is where using liquid glue is really handy because you have time to uh, make the adjustments. So pretty much your base project is complete. So now I'm going to show you the full reveal on how I designed this recipe center. Here you're looking at the front of the box. You can also see where I used the book plate from the album as the center point for the front of the of the, the recipe center as a label holder. I made divider cards. The font that I use for the divider cards is called Harrington. And I cut the divider cards out with my Cameo and use my Silhouette software to print the words that you see on the recipe dividers. This is a very sturdy piece. 
it will hold a tablet as you can see here. So if you're someone who does not have any paper recipes and you use social media, then you can easily set your tablet on this and not worry that it's going to tip the whole center all over. It won't, as you saw here. I use the cut aparts to decorate the dividers and I use some of the designer paper as well to make pockets in each divider. Because if you're a cook like me, I take a lot of notes for new recipes. I write myself a lot of reminders and I'm always sticking them in places I can't find them. So with this recipe center, I can use it and stick my notes, stick photos, coupons, clippings, whatever it is, and it's all in one place instead of four or five different uh, recipe albums that I have. And I'm showing you that because these are my actual recipes that I have had for years and years and years in various cookbooks. And so they fit really nicely in this recipe center. Here I used one of the cut aparts as a tuck spot. And the chipboard element to use that as a tuck spot as well. Even a place for a pin. The handle for the drawer is a um, drawer, crystal drawer knob that I had, and I attached it with the brad from the other side of the box. I used a variety of flowers. The center flower there is from Prima. I used 49 and Market, the little wire pieces, and I don't know, the seed, the little seed element I used from 49 and Market. And then I also used 49 and Market flowers. Uh, they were a perfect match. This particular shade was a perfect match for the designer paper. I also used some flowers from um, Petaloo. And it, I just used, I think, one, maybe two, because I wanted that pop of rich red to go with the, the ribbon on top of the tags. And the ribbon, if I didn't say it before, came from Michael's. That red check uh, ribbon came from Michael's. And then a chipboard element. The matchbook box does not come with a clear um, transparency over it in the window area. I added that. And here's one of the my vintage recipes that was handed down to me from my son's great grandmother. So the patina on that recipe is perfect for this project. In addition uh, to some of the elements I just talked about, I used a wooden spoon that I purchased from uh, one of the Japanese dollar stores in the area. And I just thought it was just a cute little accent. Every cook has a wooden spoon and you use it as a mixing spoon or a tasting spoon. And this is just an ode to um, what us cooks use in the kitchen when we're cooking. Besides, it has a nice farmhouse look. So let me uh, turn to the uh, recipe album itself. There you see where I use the, the waxes to distress the strap. Um, to cl cl closure there. And then I use some basic gray magnets just to keep everything closed. There's plenty of spots that I designed in this album to tuck a recipe, a note, a photo, a clipping, whatever you like uh, for the recipe center. And lots and lots of uh, tuck spots to do that. The ATC tags themselves were used as the marker for each pocket um, 
photo mat or note mat or there again you see one of the really really nice cut aparts in the collection. And I show you how you can use each section of the album to put little recipe clippings. This is a belly band, and then I used a cut apart to make a tuck spot, another cut apart to use a tuck spot. And on the opposite page, that's the original pocket from the album. Another tag, and then a pocket in the back. The white cards could be used as a photo mat. It could be used as notes. You can clip another recipe to it. You can clip your post-it notes if you take post-it um, notes on a post-it pad and stick it there. Just lots of uses. I made an accordion pocket for adding larger quantities of clippings or larger items. I just love that black check gigum in the paper collection. One more tuck spot there. Another pocket. Another tag, gorgeous papers. And then another accordion pocket in the back. I really, really enjoyed putting this together and using all of the elements in the ATC tag and pocket album as well as the matchbook box. It really all came together to make this lovely little recipe center that rotates. And again, if, if you don't have paper recipes. You can just simply use it to hold your tablet as you're cooking. And I'll show you one more time that this is a very sturdy recipe center because it's holding a Samsung. This happens to be a Samsung tablet that's in here. And it's not going to tip over. You can still rotate it and it stays straight up. It does not wobble. And it actually looks really nice with the Graphic 45 papers. I certainly hope you enjoyed this project. I had a blast designing it and making it come to life. I want to thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing what you come up with in your own recipe center.